nice picture, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. We we had them uh, practice on the on the two BMWs first, and then that way I knew that they wouldn't scratch the paint on the GTO. So <laughs> it's a smart, smart, uh, smart way to go. Huh. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, they 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 did a pretty good job. To be honest, I was impressed. So. Really Morning. Good. Morning, Lana. How, how are Lana? you? Good. How are you? Good. Well, uh, appreciate everybody coming on today for the education. Um, what we're going to do today, and Tom, I don't know if if you can pull up the document, um, which is the uh, we're going to spend some time going through training for the the closing. So we'll call it kind of post closing process. Uh, oh, okay. Try to get as through as much as we can. What I wanted to do was to spend some time actually going through the proactive document uh, that we give out to the clients. So I don't know if you want to pull that document up mm -hmm. uh, that we can walk through and just give Lana some, some up to speed as to how that is uh, going to work, how we're going to track that. It's going to take a little bit of while, a little bit of time, because we're going to have to get really into the tracking, Lana, but it's something that I think will be really, really super fruitful mm -hmm. for the client to have. So um, so we'll, we'll spend a, um, a little bit of time on that. And then if we have more time, because I have to have a hard stop at 12, because I've got a 12 o'clock call I've got to get on today. So are you able to share that, Tom? Yeah, I've got the, I've got, what I've got is a, an example of the proactive summary. Yep. And then um, I guess we can, yeah, let's, let's start by going over that. That's probably the best yeah. way to go. Okay. And I gave you. Uh, there, I see it, yeah. Okay. You can share. Are you guys weathering the 118 degree weather? <laughs> <laughs> Super cold. <laughs> Indoors. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is so this is our proactive summary report. And Juan, I don't know if you remember we we didn't go over this specific um, form. But what we went over was the proactive tracking in the um, in the the um, I guess the our overall checklist, you know, the the phase two master checklist, how it has mm -hmm. all those gray boxes where if you put an X in there, um, yes, yes, and yes. yeah, okay, cool, mm -hmm. and then you go to that proactive tracker tab, mm -hmm. and. Probably what I need to do on that to make it easier for you, because I think the way I was doing it, I was I was just kind of I was counting them up. Actually, I had a little formula. I was just dropping in there to count them up, so I can I allow the formula so it's always working. But basically, at the end of the deal, we just kind of look and see how many total number of proactive issues did we address. Uh, in this one, it was it was 17, um, and then it breaks it down. In this one, there's no real potential deal killers not always going to find a deal killer. So those are kind of, you know, big, big, big pitfalls that don't exist on every deal. Um, but they will, they will show up. Um, but then, you know, specifically it will break it down if it's a, a deal or structure uh, issue, deal structure issue. Well, Tom, um, I'm, I'm going to jump in real quick before you keep, it's good, but I want to okay. just give, uh, I think it's important to also understand what is this report, right? Oh, so, sure, sure, sure. This report, Lana, is specifically designed to give the client a summary of all of the proactive things that Integrity Capital did for them during the transaction, okay? So they have a like a snapshot visual to go, oh, you guys solved like 17 problems proactively and you spent 21 and a half hours or so on the file and then and then it just so it's a it's a tangible way that we can 
solidify our, you know, vision of being the most proactive commercial mortgage markets company. So. Yeah. And, I, I th and then, and I think the reason that we came up with this report was because we were having the conversation is kind of like, how do we, how do we show, how does the customer know that they're essentially, you know, getting what they paid for? Because really if they get what they paid for, they'll never know that they got what they paid for because none of these things come up and, and, and interrupt their process and the deal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they just have this experience where they're like, oh, that went really smoothly, but they don't actually know what happened to make it a smooth deal. So that's kind of, right. yeah, that's why we put this together. So, okay. you know, you know, it's tracking the, the number of issues proactively addressed, you know, deal killers. Um, this could be anything um, from, let's, um, I'm trying to think of what we have on here that was potential environmental issues. Issue. That's a deal kill killer, um, something that we need to address. Um, fees could be a deal killer. You know, if, if they just don't have the, the, the money to, to cover the, the loan costs, you know, things like that. Those are things we want to address up front. Fraud. Cash flow. fraud yeah, yeah. Fraud, you know, yeah. cash flow, um, those sort of things. Um, deal or structure issues, that stuff that's, you know, it's, it's, it's impactful. But it's things like, you know, uh, you know, what if they don't, what if they, they need something that's not, uh, uh, that doesn't have like a prepayment period or, you know, that something where they can pay it off in two years with no prepayment, you know, those are the things that we're addressing up front. And, and um, a lot of that, uh, a lot of that applies to rates, terms, things like that, you mm -hmm. know, they could potentially, you know, well, that doesn't fit into what my plan is for the property or what I can you know, what my, my intentions are. So, um, and then time cost, that's things, again, fees do work into this, um, but it's mostly, you know, what did, what did we do um, to, uh, to basically take things off their plate? Um, like uh, if we have a, a client with an SBA loan, we tell them up front, hey, you're going to need life insurance, you better get to work on that. You know, we're not essentially doing it for them, but they're, we're prompting them and having the conversation up front. So at the end of the, the, the road, they're not starting to get life insurance, which takes, you know, can take two weeks or more, maybe a month in some cases, that extends the period alone another month because they addressed it up front. So, you know, things like that. And then other, um, <clears throat> these are just kind of like the, the miscellaneous, like informational, um, you know, um, the, the questions like, um, you know, hey, how much, how much owner equity, you know, have you put into the construction process so far? Or who owns the construct, who owns the, controls the funds in the construction process? Just so the borrower kind of has like a peace of mind and an understanding up front. So they're not surprised at the end of like, oh, I didn't realize that, you know, the, the, the funds are, um, you know, going straight from the bank to the GCs or, you know, that the funds have to pass through me to go to the GC and it's an extra step, but, you know, just to, to get the information to them essentially. Um, so all those, you know, combined up to the, the total proactive, um, uh, you know, steps that we've taken. And that's why it's important when you go through the, um, the checklist that any time that, you know, even though, you know, if, Anytime that you're, you know, having a, a proactive step, um, you need to be marking it down because that's the only way to track this essentially. Um, you know, track it at the time and make a note to it because the the section down below is going to depend on the notes that you keep on it. But before we go to there, um, the other high level kind of review where people see, you know, the this this sheet and they realize where they're getting their money's worth is this time total time spent on the file which that's why we you know that's why on, on your side you're tracking the time that you're putting into the files because at the end of the day we can show to our client like hey you you saved almost a full day of working doing nothing but working on this loan um to and and that's what we gave back to you so you know i don't know what I can't remember what this individual made an hour, but, you know, essentially, you know, he got that back, um, you know, in, in, in being able to run him, operate his business, do his thing. Um, we took that off of his plate. So that's kind of, I think that, that one speaks volumes, um, you know, also as far as time saved. Um, so that's why yeah. it's kind of. A, yeah. Sorry, I have a, when, when um, I have a question and then I have a comment. Sure. So 
question is, so you have the deal killer issues, deal structure issues. So that is per individual loan. So like mm -hmm. there were, okay. So why you said no? Yes. Well, it depends. Each, each, I mean, each well, deal, I, yeah. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So on this one, there was 10 structure issues. There, see, and it's not necessarily a structure issue. It's just like a proactive moment. Um, so it could have been, okay. you know, things, things up right. front okay. where, yeah. Um, it, yeah, these aren't necessarily all issues. It's just things that are, that are addressed um, that we are basically bringing into the light and discussing, um, okay. you know, and it, and it might not be, it might not be a, a, in a sense that, you know, you might have something that pops up as a deal killer issue, which might not necessarily be a 100%, you know, we saved the deal, but it's something we brought into the light to avoid. Like, let's say, for example, you have an SBA loan, um, you know, and they're going to pull a CAVERS report on that. The CAVERS is the one that checks to see if they have any government, you know, outstanding government debt that hasn't been paid, like that they're delinquent on. And we say, hey, Mr. Customer, mm -hmm. have, have you, you know, foreclosed on an FHA loan or not paid any student loans? And they're like, ah, I can't remember, you know, sometimes I forget to pay my student loans. I don't know if it's, if it's going to show up on a CAVERS report. We tell the lender, hey, Mr. Lender, pull that report today. We need to know that's very important. Right. So we're going to mark that down as in the, in the kickoff call, we address that potential CAVERS issue, ask lender to pull the report early, uh, you know, and, you know, that's at that point, we've been proactive because it's an, it's something that could potentially be a deal killer. It doesn't necessarily mean that the cavers so, was a deal killer. It just, it's something that we addressed. Um, but on the flip side, we need to make sure that we're following up to make sure, did the cavers report get pulled? Did it come through cleanly, essentially, you know? So Dave, would an example be um, like with Stelia having to pull her credit yep. report early because we Absolutely. needed to know what her where, where her credit, yep. credit stood? That was okay. mm -hmm. exactly it. Yep. So okay. any, anything that could cause a negative challenge in a transaction that you took the initiative before it came to fruition is going to be considered proactive. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Remember, when we go back to proactive, it is the notion of identifying a risk and then going through the action of trying to mitigate that in advance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's that's so if you're deaf so what tom is trying to say is that that covers every issue but what we're doing is just delineating to say well was this one could this one have actually blown the deal up or was it just something that could have caused some challenges in the deal structure um on the time cost did the proactive move you do actually potentially save them some money Mm -hmm. uh, and or time so that's that's the delineation between that but it, this for simplistic purposes every proactive thing you do you want to be cognizant of that to say that really has benefited the client and within within the document tom has grayed out some areas that we feel are more impactful i guess than than not mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, you know, and, and just a thought on that, on that credit bureau one, there's going to be, there's going to be things, you know, the, the checklist tries to cover uh, as much as the process as it can. Obviously, you know, we're always saying, let's add that to the checklist. Let's add that to the process. So if there's things that you are doing proactively outside of, you know, what's popping up on the checklist, you know, like pulling credit early, um, if, you know, obviously that credit doesn't really get discussed too heavily, like credit score, credit report doesn't get, get discussed too heavily in like the kickoff call. Mm -hmm. Um, or if the, if there's somewhere where you're feeling like, oh, okay, that could be added. I know there's like a section on the initial, on the initial call with the borrower that discusses credit. So, I mean, you could potentially just flag that section, you know, discussion with borrower. No, there's, there's no certainty that the credit's good. So we pulled the credit report early, you know, make notes there. But if there's something that you can't find that fits into here, 
you know, into the checklist, keep notes on proactive, you know, steps that you take outside of the process, because those could also become potential, you know, things that we need to add to the checklist or to the process, you know, for future files. So, um, you know, just keep, keep that in mind too. Some, you know, I used to, you know, write down, um, on like in some of the checklists, I would just make additional notes like this is what I did on this file to you know that was proactive, um, mm -hmm. just to, to to remind myself. Um, yeah. So. Are you uh, before we go? Is this making sense so far, Lana? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Cool. Okay. So and then you know when so uh, you know I did the top part by. By, tra by the proactive tracker tab, you know, that gave me the, the total number of each. And then the, the hours spent was obviously from my time tracker that I was using. So then on the top five issues addressed, what I would do on that is basically after, I'd still go off that proactive tracker tab. And when you put an X next to a proactive moment and you make a note in it, it, it feeds that note over to the proactive tracker. Yeah. So then you can kind of scroll through it and, and see, you know, what were the top five issues addressed, which you're really not going to know the top five until you're done. So it's, you know, it's kind of hard to, you know, you can sometimes flag it out if there's like a deal killer, you know, that maybe that was like, you know, that should be on the report or whatnot, but you kind of read through all your notes and you can say, well, these were, you know, from, from the process, these were the major ones that we avoided, you know, really deal killers should probably be on here first. The, um, this one had no deal killer. So this one was, you know, we identified that the bar needed to increase the initial loan amount request early in the process to avoid a later re-underwriting of the deal. Um, and so, you know, that's essentially, it's not, it, 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 that's a deal or structure issue. Um, obviously it's not something that saved the deal from being declined or anything like that, but re-underwriting the deal would obviously add time. Anytime it goes back in front of the underwriter, the underwriter gets to ask more questions, which potentially could lead to a deal killer in some way. Um, but you know, that's why I felt that one was like most proactive. It saved time. It saved possibly headache on it, um, and, and that's why it made it onto the list. Um, so, and then next step, uh, next second um, issue was identified early that lender would require the guarantor's trust to also be a guarantor avoiding potential changes later in the process. So, you know, on our kickoff call, and I, I think this was actually one that, a deal that I had sourced. So I, I think this might've happened before the kickoff call, but it was, you know, we had that question in the kickoff call. Hey, do you have a trust? You know, are you, you know, you uh, are, are your assets tied up in a trust? And, you know, that's, that's where this question came up early in the process, not once it made it to underwriting and the underwriter said, hey, you know, look like this guy might has a trust. Let's go back and, and backpedal and get that documentation. Um, so <clears throat> um, next one was worked with lender to provide necessary title endorsements early in the process to avoid potential title requirement changes later in the process. Um, this was one where um, we've got a, a pretty good system with Mike. This was an ideal deal I did with Mike Park. Um, so whenever I open escrow with Mike, I can get him to send over title endorsements pretty early. Some lenders won't do that. Um, like, you know, the, with um, like First Western, they're still trying to iron out their process and they don't really know their endorsements until the end. But some of the lenders, you can ask them up early and just say, hey, um, you know, get in contact with title and start working with them. So this was one that, you know, it, the sooner you, ha you know what the title endorsements are, the sooner title knows exactly what they're going to need from your client. So, you know, uh, I'd consider that proactive. Um, identify the signing member of borrowing entity was out of state and worked with all parties to coordinate document si signatures uh, efficiently. So this was one where in the, in the kickoff call, it gets discussed, you know, where, where are your, you know, where are the members of the entity located? Um, well, this guy was here in Phoenix and, you know, he even came into our office and sat down and had conversations, but the, the person signing it was in Florida, if I remember correctly. So, you know, that's something that, you know, if they, if, if we need to have somebody out of state signing, that's something we need to coordinate with title and make sure that title, most title companies should have like a, a mobile notary that they can reach out to in Florida or another state, not all do. And some title companies have like offices. This one was a little unique because the, the um, member actually 
was uh, his mother and elderly and really couldn't leave the home. So we had to make sure that we had a, a mobile notary that could go to the house and basically, you know, be patient and work with somebody who, you know, is obviously going to take a little extra time to sign documents. Um, so that was definitely a proactive step. Um, and then, oh, this one doubled up on here. So, oh, yeah, I apologize yeah, sure. on that. I must have copied and pasted it on there twice. So, yeah, this we should have five separate um, ones on here. So I, I don't have the um, uh, report up in front of me on this one, so I'm not sure why that did that. Um, but yeah, basically, the you know we, we want five separate. So maybe this is a bad example. I should probably update my example. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sorry, um, you, you kind of you you get the yes, gist I get it, I get it. Address, you know, and, yes. and so. Tom obviously wasn't very proactive. <laughs> right. <laughs> you um, want that note down on there, Tom? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> He's actually just trying to see if you and I would be proactive and catch it. That was his. Yeah, it was a I test. No, because I was following along and not reading ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very proactive of you. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, That's good. So the so the document is again for the benefit of the client to help us uh, to tangibly, you know, show them how we added the value to them. Okay, it's also a good little marketing piece for us with them as well. Um, you know, just another way that we can kind of show them, hey, we, you know, uh, this is why you chose to work with us, and we were able to execute on those things. So. <clears throat> so well, where do I find this document and who and when does they obviously get sent out at the end of the after closing but is that sent by you Dave or is it sent by the processor uh, it's going to be sent by the salesperson mm -hmm. so, yeah and that that salesperson. form is okay. in yeah that form is in the the share file folder the processor forms used okay okay um, yeah <clears throat> and it's actually on that on our closing checklist it's there's a there's a step on there that says was it provided um to okay. the to i think i've got a dave on this but and, re and remember that yeah i remember seeing that on that on that list but i didn't know what it was yeah email proactive report to david yeah yeah so we we want to have all of our forms generally in one on probably the one spreadsheet lana we want to try to keep everything on one central area just to make it easier to get access to everything um, and tom i'd like to um add that on the tracker sheet um later maybe today or whatever it, mm -hmm. the formulas to calculate are for some reason aren't working and i'm not i know a little of excel but i'm not you know i'm not super good at the formula piece are so. you looking at proactive tracker the proactive proactive tracker tab um it's the tracker that you gave me in the beginning where you track like you know the deal and and you know all the well, like stuff hey, are you talking about frame? the phase yeah. two master checklist or um, is it the master checklist or is it a different? Uh, a tracker, like the the tracker where it tracks, um, maybe it is. I can't think of the name of it right off the bat. But Tom, I, I'll get with you on that later. Okay. Yeah. Have you um, help me to fix it? I don't yeah, know no, it totally. Got, yep. I, don't, I don't know how it got messed up, but it did. Don't worry. Yeah, no, we can fix it. And why don't Hopefully. we... Uh, why don't you take this off and then why don't we walk through um, just the closing checklist, Tom, the post closing. Oh, okay. Yep. Checklist. Uh, I know Lon and I went through it, but I think it's just good to go back through uh, this as well. Um, Cause I am, I'm recording these now cause it'll just be good for us in the future. We can have all these training things for oh, future candidates. Jeez. Did you just, 
record me completely botching my example? Yes, exactly. Guess what? Yes. I'm recording it too. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, man. Uh, you double. Oh, man. <laughs> double in trouble. Uh, okay, so the, fir the first you know, piece, obviously, Tom, why don't you kind of walk through mm -hmm. and just chime in. Uh, some sure. of these we're going to probably change, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> this, this section is really uh, call to the borrowers is Dave and I were doing these together. Um, so it's basically, you know, once, once the loan's closed, you need to give Dave the heads up. He doesn't always get the emails because we're working with title and lender and sometimes title just emails us uh, and says, Hey, you, you funded. Um, and I've actually seen it where they don't even let the borrower know. So, um, you know, at that point, you just need to, to call the borrower to, you know, congratulate them, let them know it's closed. Normally do that as a conference call with Dave. Um, and then I don't know, are we going to keep on doing this part, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. well, no, that, okay. So that one is going to be on pause right now, Tom. Okay. I think we just, we have to, I like the concept. We we're the, the execution is a little tricky right now because we don't know sure. exactly how to, to do it. So I would say we still mm -hmm. want to figure out, so that'll probably be a separate section, uh, of a discussion, a brainstorm session we might all have to figure out a better way because we have to have the idea plus the implementation figured out too. Yeah. Right? We just don't have the implementation. So, okay. So okay. So this, that, that's on pause right now. Okay. So we'll leave that section back burner. I'll just leave it on the checklist or, or whatnot for now. So it's there to remind us. Um, then during the call, really Lana, what we real, should... Real quick, Lana, just make sure that these are getting tweaked on your end, okay? On, um, yeah. I'll, um, this is the original copy. I'll just hide it from there for now. Okay, that's good. So, um, so <clears throat> really the goals of the call, um, congratulate, request feedback on the experience. And normally Dave leads these calls. Um, so just trying to get, you know, a, a verbal take from the borrower, you know, was it smooth? Was it good? What could have gone better? Um, you know, and, and normally not kind of just like, pro, like, you know, just really a general conversation to see what pops up and, you know, what comes out of their, out of, out of their mind on it. Um, and then obviously asking for a, a Google review at this time, just to say, Hey, can we, can we get, you know, go and give us a, a rating? Um, now, obviously, it was a horrible experience. We probably skipped that step, <laughs> but <laughs> right. good to good to you know get feedback from everybody, they good or bad. We, first, we wanna, then, yeah. then ask for the <laughs> that's probably yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, we definitely we definitely want to hear what their what their thoughts on the process yeah. were. Mm -hmm. um, we <clears throat> yeah, and then we we were you know at some point you know prior to this whole COVID thing, um, just kind of pitching you know hey meet for lunch or, or meet for coffee at some point. Um, and I think the intention was meeting for lunch or coffee was also a good time to deliver that proactive report because it's kind of a face to face and right. it's kind of like an eye opening, like, wow, like this is okay. So I didn't realize you guys did all this. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, you know, that's really something that we, you know, maybe that's a 2021. Yeah, um, I think that's probably a 2021, but yeah. we, I think we might even put a, uh, so yeah, so that, that'll just be again, a pause yeah. button thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, and then this this section here is for for us to complete, just to make sure the file is full um, with the information it needs. Um, part of this is it, this is kind of a, a few facets. This one is obviously we need the information um, on our side in case we're audited. At some point, we will be audited, and we just need to make sure that we're keeping track of loans that close that close, and we need complete packages. Um, second is for, for just our records for us to be able to know, you know, this is, this is what we were able to do for this loan, you know, terms we got final, everything's executed and done. Um, and then third, you know, some of this stuff is the next time, you know, you know, some clients like, you know, Terrence Berry, uh, Jordan Taylor, they've come to us a couple times and we want to make sure we have this information handy, um, for, you know, if they need a, if they want to do business with us again, or, you know, sometimes they just ask like, Hey, 
remember that loan you did for me a year ago? Do you happen to have a copy of that note, deed of trust, whatever, just to be able uh, as a resource to the borrowers? Um, and it gives, you know, it, it's just good. Um, but basically, we want to make sure we've got the closing package from the title company. Um, if we don't have that, make sure we request it right away. Um, if in title, the title company closing package is going to include a lot of the documents in this that are being requested. Um, a credit report, if we pulled, this is very few and far between. I don't think we've actually ever pulled a credit report since I've been here, but just yeah. if we need, if we pulled it, we need it just audit purposes. Um, credit authorization form, if we pulled credit, you know, again, could be NA. Um, and then tax returns, personal or business, this could be BNA. Most likely we'll have business and personal tax returns. We just need to make sure that we've got a copy. Um, copy of the signed fee agreement um, or equivalent, you know, in something like Tom Keg, um, you know, he has his own fee agreement. We do like to get our fee agreement signed, even if it doesn't, you know, even if like the fee is referring to a, another fee agreement, just because it allows us for marketing uh, uh, information. Um, yeah, make sure on that one too, do we, Lana, if you, if you might want to look on the transition document to see if the agreement is discussed on there. Because, it is. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to have a note that it is signed by both parties if it's not. And then that way that, mm. that will help cover that issue mm -hmm. when you're going, you know, proactively, when you're going to get documents, et cetera, filled out. So yeah i actually added that remember i was i was telling you i was doing my my hard copy loan processing checklist which i will transfer but it's just easier to have everything on paper for me okay that is one of my um one of my items on the checklist okay that's so, good yeah so yeah definitely make sure uh so okay that's good all right. All right. So um, application uh, 1003 or equivalent could be lender's form. So this is primarily for, well, I mean, we if, if the lender has an application, we want a copy of it. Um, not all lenders have this. Just Mountain America does. Um, uh, First Western Trust and Jeremy, I don't think they really do. Sometimes it'll be like their personal financial statement. Ideally, what, if it comes down to it, the application is our fee agreement. So for auditing purposes, we need to show that we had a fee agreement signed. That's, so that's, you know, the, the last, the, the default is our fee agreement for the application, which obviously okay. we're addressing above. But for auditing purposes, that's, that's critical. Um, deed of trust, um, that's, we need a, we need a copy of, of the uh, deed of trust for the, for the file, um, lender or title should be able to provide that um, warranty deed. That can potentially be an NA um, if it's just like a refinance. If it, the property's not changing hands, um, you know, there's not going to be a warranty deed. Um, copy of the note, definitely need that for the file for auditing purposes. Um, again, lender or title can provide that, and then settlement statement. We need that for the file, the final settlement statement. Um, maybe I should actually expand on that and put final settlement statement, but that's for auditing purposes. Definitely need that one. Um, yeah, that's really important that we have that for sure. So um, <clears throat> these are, this is an, an NA item, um, or it can be NA, uh, W-2s, pay stubs, copies of checks. Not very often do we get borrowers that are that are W two, but it does happen. Um, so just need to make sure we've got those, just you know, for, for our records. Um, customer service survey funded to title company and complete. Um, on now, I, I'm out of the loop on this one. Are we sending customer service surveys still on files once they're completed? I, I would say yes. We still need to get Lana up to speed on that. Okay, um, but Lana will. We'll do, uh, maybe on Monday, just remind me, and uh, we'll actually go through the, the surveys. And Tom, can you remind, just email me as well, the uh, mm -hmm. survey, so I can go through that with her. Yeah, I'll email a copy to you. Okay. Um, 
Sorry, I'm making a note. Um, so what do we have next? Uh, thank you card to the client. Um, that was, that's something that, that Dave or I guess myself would be doing. Um, but you, we need to be, um, you know, reminding Dave, you know, yep. Hey, close, send a, send a thank you card or whatever the plan is. Um, you know, that's, you know, sometimes, um, Dave just sends a card, sends a book, sends, you know, gift cookies. Yeah, so make, make sure, uh, Lana, on that, just go ahead and whoever the associate is, just have it on there that you need to remind them to send out a gift or a card, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and then, you, and then that's your responsibility to just remind them. Okay. Hey, it's closed. You want, might want to send out a card or a gift. So it, it, it could be that simple, but let's make sure we do it. Um. Then renaming the folder so that basically once the file is closed, we just we just keep this kind of naming convention. So the property name or file name, the client name, and then the date it closed. You have to do you have to change the name of the folder in share file through the web. You can't do it on your desktop, so just be aware of that. If you try it, it I starts tried and it won't it doesn't allow me to do that. That says We're, I don't I don't have permission to do that. Were you doing it through the actual um, share file? Website? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, I'll we'll try it out again, and then I'll let you know. We'll check it again and make sure. It might be one of the initial files that we sent over to you that um, maybe we hadn't clicked off, like admin access to it or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that could be potentially why. So when you but, have property name and client name, do you do you want it like to match the 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 deed of trust, like or the name of the file? Or property, yeah, property name should really be file name. Yeah, it changes like, to like, file name. Like for example. Um, you know, Manget Investments. So would we say like Manget Investments 1 LLC and then the date closed? Um, client name should be the individual. So it'd be, okay. so whatever you, I don't know what that file was named. It was just Manget, you know, Manget Building or Manget whatever group or whatever. And then it should be dash Parminder Singh dash okay. and then the date that it closed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because we want to be able to reference it two ways. Um, you know, if, you know, some, some files stick out more because of the client than the, than the file name. Um, but we want to be able to search for it and see it multiple mm. ways and, okay. and keep track of things that way. Okay. I would do, I would add an additional thing on that. Actually, I would say file name. And then I would also do a dash um, transaction type because, you know, and this is what I mean by that. So that it says industrial cash out refi, apartment uh, purchase, owner occupied, okay. you know, blah, blah, blah. So because that might just be another way that we reference the deal. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And Lana, one of the things I want you to think about on this too, this closing checklist, it really serves a couple of purposes and this is why it's really important that we stay on top of it. It obviously gives us the data to go back if we need to, but really the probably the most important thing is think about this as all these little things you're doing are gonna make it really super easy when we get audited every five years. Mm -hmm. to go back and easily just reference it. So mm -hmm. we're doing this really based upon the Department of um, Institutions. So if all this stuff is nice and neat and complete, uh, that rhymed, by the way, that was cool. Um, <laughs> another Davidism. Mm -hmm. uh, Davidism. Great. So our training video is going to have your sweet rhymes and my botched example exactly. on it. Perfect. <laughs> well, strategic. <laughs> Uh, but it'll just make it uh, easier for, uh, you know, when the audit comes that we can just go back and reference and not go, what, what did we do? So, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because definitely, we, I mean, we, we had to go through that what, last year and yep. having, having this checklist and going through it, we realized that, yeah, we set this up prior to 
but yeah, when we went through the, the audit process, we were like, oh, well, we've already hit all these, you know, it was just, it was, it was pretty, you know, pretty easy. So, um, so, um, schedule client or um, review clients, schedule real estate, log properties and present to manager for other loans. Um, really, we should be doing this on the front end, um, but it's not bad to do on the back end also, just because, you know, it, it wouldn't be the first time that, that a client said, oh yes, I forgot about that property. Um, let me add that to my schedule of real estate owned. And, you know, it's just something, you know, be aware of. Um, or, you know, as you get more familiar with this, um, you know, it might be, you know, you know, things that pop in, pop in your mind and you realize, oh, wow, like potential opportunity here. Um, so it's just good to be, be aware of those things um, that might come to, you know, just come to light during the process itself. Um, and then this one, um, follow up, put, um, put follow up dates on in calendar for loan opportunities. Um, that should, this, be, I, that should be sent. So if, if there is here, here's what I would say. Those two things actually can probably be off the list, Tom. Okay. Well, I, I'm trying to think through this because we sort of address it on the transition call. Um, when we say, have you looked through the personal financial statement, but we may, um, we may actually, um, want to double, just double hit it. So maybe I do want to keep it. So well, what I could do, Dave, Dave, tell me your thoughts is when I send the, um, the proactive report to you, yep. maybe I can just remind you, I'll hit those items in, in the email to remind you to do, to do that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, why don't you, no, I like that, Lana. That's, that's efficient. So I'd say, why don't you do that? And then make a note to just attach the client's personal financial statement or schedule of REO. Um, and then that way I could just quickly review it and see if there's any opportunities. Okay. So, so you could just okay. kind of tweak that to, to mimic that, you know, your, your good suggestion there. So. Okay. All right. So um, Long email day. Email Janice Weinbrenner. Well, with, uh, actually, go up, go up a couple with Tom. Actually, log log in all the client information into the CRM database. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I skipped ahead. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Basically, um, just go. Uh, it, by the time the deals get to you, um, everybody should be in 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 Salesforce. Just make sure that the information is updated and accurate. Um, you know, yeah, like sometimes I'll, I've obtained like an additional phone number or something. Yeah. So I have added that. And, exactly. adre and address. So you, we yeah. want as much information in that database as we can. Th th mm -hmm. This is super, super important. Tom knows this mm -hmm. too. We, we just, we want information in there because again, it'll just, it's helpful when we start marketing and it's just, you know, it's, it'll yeah. be so. Yeah. And then, yeah. Or even additional contacts. So if they come back and they say, well, you know, that's, that's a great list of things you want, but ask Bob, my assistant for it, Bob goes in the, in the, in the database, um, just everybody. Right. So, um, yeah. So just make, yeah, make sure we've got everybody logged in there. Um, fill out tombstone template and for to manager. I can't, I have a feeling we went over this uh, a while ago. Um, if not, we can go over it again. The well, tombstone. I I sent uh, Lana the, t Lana, I think I sent you a template, didn't I? I think so, yeah. So, so that, that will need to be filled out in a word format to the best of your ability. Um, so Tom, if you want to just expand on that, but I think that's really important for us as well. Yeah, so this, is, this gets used um, for, for marketing. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're kind of, it captures like high, high level details on, on the loan. Uh, it also captures some contact information for, um, brokers involved, you know, on, uh, you know, if we have a buying and, and selling agent, um, those names should also be dropped into the, uh, CRM database just to, you know, to highlight on that previous point there. Um, 
but it, 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 we do need a picture of the property on there. So if it's something, you know, if it's commercial real estate, most of the stuff that we do is, um, you know, a picture from the appraisal normally is a good route to go. Um, if it's, you know, a business acquisitions, you know, company logo, um, company logo is a good way to go. Um, but we want to just make sure that each one of these we're completing and uh, including in the, in the file. Um, just so when, you know, it, it, when it's time to market, we've got something just quickly reference and, and send off and say, yep, here's, here's marketing information for one, uh, Hernan. One thing to add to that, Tom, is mm -hmm. um, that I would make a, I would make a note and, and change that to basically say um, reference fee agreement to make sure that we, we should. So yeah. if, 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 if the fee agreement does not have the initials next to the marketing section in there, then that is going to be a non-applicable issue because we, we don't have the right from the client yeah. to market the, the project. So yeah, so that's just, a good point. Yeah. yeah, just make sure that that's in there because otherwise it's just a fruitless exercise because we, we can never use it anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So on the, on the free agreement, I, I think it's, I can find you the page, the page. I think it's, it's just an initialed um, basically can integrity capital market um, the property or, or, or the deal. And it might be good to just include, even if we can't include a t tombstone template in there and just put on there, not allowed to market and just leave it in the file just so there's no, oops, I, you know, I thought we hadn't done it and, you know, it's, it's now it's in there just because uh, uh, that could potentially be a, you know, an issue if we market something we're not supposed to. Um, so just yeah. as like a stop, stop on it. Um, then uh, next one, email to Janice Weinbrenner with closing dates, fee amounts, client names. So I just did that. Great. Right. Good job. Perfect. I did that on the the three that we, uh, Primely Pure, Mantrek, and Parminder. Okay, perfect, cool. I think there might've been another one too. Uh, and again, just for the sake of the recording here, so this is for the bookkeeper who does all of our P&Ls to make sure that we know, you know, this is also for auditing too, because they want to reference the closing date, the fee amount, and then the client's name. Plus I can understand where the revenue is and I can answer it. So, so yeah, so let's just make sure to do that. So good job. Um, the next is uh, add a loan to closed funded history spreadsheet. I think that we might've gone over that one also. We can go over it again. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I don't really remember. Okay. I mean, that's one where I, uh, there's a section on there that, uh, that rates the, the um, lenders that we worked with. Mm. Um, if you recall, I, I think I told you that. You, yeah, uh, I do vaguely remember you telling <laughs> me about it. Well, I, I with think, so much other information. <laughs> well, I think, I think the, what we want to do. So Lana in the um, Google doc marketing stats that you have all of your 30, 60, 90, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. kind of went through a little, little bit of this when we went through too. There's a, there's a tab called closing. Okay. But it'll say closings. In the closings tab, you're going to see all of the fundings for 2020, and you'll see all of the ones we've closed already. Mm. You want to go through and fill everything out in that section every time, okay? okay. If, it's, if it's not already in there, okay? All right. So you want to fill out uh, in there. If you were in there right now, you're going to see I put, I put in Gateway, Chris Potter, First Western Trust Bank. Brett, the lawyer's title, the date it closed, the amount, fee amount, and then who originated it. Okay. So this will be really, it's, it's important, obviously, because we need to track all of it, but it's also um, important to, uh, for us to, especially when we bring on other producers that we hire, mm -hmm. to be able to track their commissions and, you know, et cetera. So, okay. Okay. Um, so, and then on that, and I don't know if on the, 
Yeah, so on the on the on the the Google Doc one, the closing does not have like the lender rating on it. We but... don't, you, Tom. That's going to be not applicable for her okay. because you're you're going to rate the lenders really. I think at the end of the day, I think I think we okay kind of have that. I can give you feedback. <laughs> yeah, I would I I would say um, yeah I, I I would say that that's probably not a bad idea. So I apologize. Mm -hmm. Maybe we add that back if you want to reverse that. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I think it's very important. Yeah. Yeah, I think what we do is that we rate the yeah I agree. So let's rate the lender, um, and the way we do that is we're going to have to have. This is, this is, again, good for us because we have to have a central place where we have the lenders logged, Tom, so that mm -hmm. we, have, um, we have a specific place that we are going to to find out what lenders we're using and who are the lenders that are on our list. So I'm, I'm thinking that, um, that maybe uh, what we do, I've got to... I can add, so there's a section in the, the same place, the marketing stats, that says top lenders. <clears throat> so why don't you just reference that and you can go to that tab. And Tom, we should probably add all the lenders we use in each one of these sections. And then um, we can just rate you know, go back through and rate because I have a whole rating thing. If you guys look on there, mm -hmm. you'll see it. Um, I built this a while back and, I, and we just haven't used it for a while, but I think it's, it's uh, I never got rid of it because it was important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we can actually rate that. Uh, and we can basically just go through every time and say, do we still agree with all these? Do you know what I mean? So it's fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to see things like execution uh you know consistency of terms are they a direct lender uniqueness you know process underwriting and approval responsiveness and turnaround you know um you know and how many you know have we closed the loan with them so i think i think that'll be good yeah no i like this it's okay okay um so let's plan on that and then that's the reference point is the top lender section lana for your reference Okay. Um, email proactive report. Obviously, that's going to go hand in glove with uh, with what we talked about. So, okay, good. Well, does that? I uh, hope that helps, Lana, for it does. Thank uh, the you. post. You know, kind of post funding mm -hmm. checklist, uh, which is really important uh, for your for the process for the loan processor. And uh, so that pretty much, I think loops us up and our uh, tying for now. So we'll plan on uh, obviously talking on Monday, Lana, but we'll do this every week and we'll just keep refining and getting better every time. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank guys. you. Cool. Both. Thank you everybody. All right, guys. Have All a right. Have a great. All right. You too. Bye-bye.